Coming up here on GMA, the third indictment of former President Trump could come as early as today. A former aide to the president is expected to appear as a witness. We're going to track the latest there. And we are following the severe storms, the tornado in North Carolina. Trevor Alt there for us. We've got flash flooding to talk about. And then the dangerous heat, both air and around the world in the oceans. I will bring you the latest from a dive with the Florida Aquarium, where we check on the health of the coral here that protects the, coral, uh, the keys. And spoiler alert, the result is not great. You'll want to see this story and so much more on GMA. Happening today, KSAT Community is coming together to help Project MEND. It's an organization that collects and refurbishes medical equipment. KSAT will host a phone bank today to collect donations. That money will then go to buy more wheelchairs, which is the most requested and needed piece of medical equipment. The phone banks today from noon to 2 and then 5 to 10.30 p.m., for more information, check out ksatcommunity.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating a deadly shooting on the city's south side. What we've been able to learn from the motel where it happened. Plus, a pest control company has another truck stolen for the second time in a month. And that was before it was used at a crime scene. And up next, there's buzz over the Spurs potentially moving to a new downtown arena. How some on the east side feel about that after 20 years at the AT&T Center. And checking traffic, things looking pretty good at I-35 and Walls on Road right now. Some construction taking place out in that area, but so far it's been a fairly uneventful morning commute. We'll be back after this break. There was a short chase and finally they pulled over. They found the driver with a gun. Now at six, an investigation into a case of human smuggling. Katrina Weber standing by with what we're now learning about the dozen people crammed into an 18-wheeler. You take a child at a young age and you enforce them, put trauma on their life, that can carry with them to adulthood. A jury in Florida is awarding the family of a little girl millions of dollars after an ugly mishap involving chicken nuggets. We'll explain still ahead. Could we tie or break a record today? Mike Ostrich has your summer forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Rise and shine. It is 6 a.m. on your Thursday, July 20th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Um, bad news for the non-winners. Someone won that billion-dollar Powerball out of California, but we did have two one million dollar winners in Pleasanton and San Marcos. That's right. The big ticket was sold in L.A. last night. More to come on that throughout the day and online at ksat.com. Mark, I'm, I'm excuse me, Mike. I know I know you played. Yes. I won eight dollars. I know you're a constant player. I didn't win player. anything. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. But you don't do the quick picks, right? You do. You have your numbers. So it, de it depends. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, what are your numbers? Uh, it is uh, 867. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got some clouds taking around here this morning and warm temperatures. Humidity is back up this morning as that, uh, as I call it, the 24 hour cycle that we go through. And again, at least we are seeing the lower humidity in the afternoons. We're at 79 right now, still holding at 80. Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, and dew points are maybe up a little bit compared to yesterday, especially around Pleasant and Stinson uh, Randolph over there toward Canyon Lake and New Braunfels. That's kind of uh, as I like to describe it, sort of fog up your glasses, sort of humidity when you walk outside. So heat index readings, 85 is up there, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, and it uh, feels like 82 out at the airport. Mold is on the low side. Update account comes out a little bit later on this morning. I would uh, suspect that's still going to be on the low side. 92 at noon, 103 high temperature. At least we break our little streak of three days in a row of 104. No, we're not going to be uh, hitting a record today close to it. Uh, it'll be a little bit closer tomorrow. And we do still have those some heat advisories and excessive heat warnings in effect. I think we'll still see some of these issued even going into the next few days in various uh, areas, maybe not quite as much of the area, but it's still going to remain very hot. All right, big question is, what about those rain chances? Yes, they do still exist. 
No, don't get your hopes very high. Details coming up on the weekend in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything big out there? It's been a chill morning over here, Mike. Thankfully, I have not spotted problems that would slow folks down. If you are waking up, take a look at your morning commute. 37 at Southeast Military should be in good shape there, but we saw that closure at 35 at Brooklyn. This is a shot at St. Mary's that shows those barrels that have been there for over a month, but we will work to get some information and update you that on that as soon as it becomes available. But for the most part, the commute has been quiet. We had some incidents reported earlier in the morning. Those have cleared out. It was, in fact, they cleared out before the show even started. But you see a lot of the construction that has been wrapping up. And that has been the real big topic throughout the week. A lot of it wrapping up because those screws are out there likely trying to beat the heat. Thankfully, you won't have to beat any congestion this early in the morning because it looks like the journey from Bernie should be about 24 minutes right here to the Alamo City. 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde. It's a 26 minute drive time and the same for our friends that are traveling along I-35 southbound from New Braunfels. So as I mentioned, the morning commute pretty quiet. We're going to keep this one really short and sweet. I'll have more updates for you coming up a little bit later on. Guys, Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, what appears to be a case of human smuggling has come to an end along Interstate 35. Bear County Sheriff's deputies took custody of the driver of a big rig and a dozen other people who they say he crammed in that truck. GMSA's Katrina Weber is live where it happened near 35 in Fisher Road. Katrina, good morning. Do they know where that truck was headed? Good morning. Well, that's still part of the investigation. Now, as far as where the truck came from, investigators believe it likely crossed the border in Laredo. Well, they say they found 10 men and two women, one of whom was pregnant inside that truck, and many of them, they say, were crammed into the cab area of the big rig. Deputies also took custody of the driver as well as a gun that they say was inside that truck. Well, this all came to light late last night after Von Ormy police checked the license plate on the big rig and realized it was stolen. That led to a brief chase with the driver eventually pulling over on the highway near Fisher Road. The Bear County Sheriff's Office and other agencies then flooded into this area to help with the apparent human smuggling case. They told us that the people who were crammed into that truck came from Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico. And they say despite those crowded conditions, they all were in good health. The next stop for all of them most likely will be federal custody. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to an active silver alert in our area. Have you seen this woman? Take a look at your screen right now. The alert's still in effect for 75 year old Olga Martinez. She's about five foot two, has brown hair and brown eyes, and she does have a medical condition. If you know where she is, call San Antonio Police at the number on your screen, 210-207-7660. Topping your morning headlines, South Florida parents say their daughter was severely burned after a piping hot McDonald's chicken nugget fell on her skin. So they took it to the courts and filed a lawsuit, and now the jury's decided how much the injury is worth. ABC's Andrew Dimber tells us what they decided. $15 million. That's what lawyers for the family of eight-year-old Olivia were requesting from a jury after she was severely burned by a chicken McNugget. This is a verdict for all time. When we walk out of those doors, that's it. We don't get to come back and say, let's check in on Olivia in five years. Back when Olivia was four, her mom took her to a McDonald's drive through for a happy meal. When she handed the meal to Olivia in the back seat, a nugget fell, getting caught between her car seat and her thigh. She suffered second degree burns. And when you take a child at a young age and you enforce her, put trauma on their life, that can carry with them to adulthood. Lawyers for McDonald's and the franchise protested that $15 million figure. They say Olivia has since healed, so they offered a far lower payout. This is the total award, $156,000. Again, use your common sense. This is over. Pain is gone. Wound is healed. She's not worried or bothered by the injury. It came down to the jury, which took just two hours yesterday to decide the final number. The family will get $800,000. Olivia's mom, satisfied. I'm actually just happy that, you know, they listened to Olivia's voice and she, the jury was able to decide a fair judgment. I'm happy with that. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Another headlines this morning, the investigation into the alleged Gilgo Beach serial killer in New York, Rex Heuerman, is now expanding to New Jersey. Authorities are looking into his possible ties to Atlantic City at a string of unsolved killings of prostitutes. It comes as investigators search land that Heuerman owns in South Carolina, looking for any evidence that could link him to the killings.
Everything from hair to uh, a trophy, souvenir, jewelry, uh, anything that can help us uh, connect uh, these victims to that vehicle will be instrumental in strengthen the case. And there's more police in Las Vegas where Hewerman has a timeshare property are now taking a look at a new look rather at unsolved cases. Meanwhile, a scorching summer continues in places like Phoenix, Arizona, with 20 straight days of over 110 degrees elsewhere. Severe storms are leaving a trail of destruction, relentless rain, leaving parts of Kentucky underwater in a tornado packing 150 miles per hour. Winds destroyed homes and businesses northeast of Raleigh, North Carolina. More record heat expected today in parts of Texas, Alabama, and Florida, with feel-like temperatures topping 110. And back here at home, the AT&T Center has been home to the San Antonio Spurs for 20 years. The building has seen iconic plays with David Robinson, the Big Three, of course, and four of those historic championships. But now there's buzz over the silver and black potentially moving to a new downtown venue. Well, lots of fans have said they would support a move to the new arena and that area. There are some, especially on the east side, who feel differently. It brings people here to kind of see what's going on over here on the east side. So it will be a travesty. And right now, you can be a part of the conversation. Scan the QR code on your screen. That'll take you to KSAT.com, where you can share your comments in one of our trending articles about a new Spurs venue. You can also read what other people are saying. Right now, 609, 78 degrees. Still to come, Shark Week at SeaWorld is almost here. And for the first time ever, they're unveiling a new shark experience. What you can expect, that's before 630. And after the break, affordable housing on a lot of people's minds across the Alamo City and across Texas. Why one expert believes some relief could be on the way for potential buyers. 78 degrees at 610. Yesterday we hit 104. Will we be a little lower than that? Michael, let us know. We come back. Welcome back. In your consumer headlines, Netflix has dropped its cheapest ad-free plan. New subscribers can no longer sign up for the basic $9.99 tier. It comes with no ads and allows you to stream only one device at a time. Existing members with this plan will not be affected. WhatsApp has launched a long-awaited new feature, a standalone app for smart watches. So it runs on Google Wear OS and will allow users to start new conversations and reply to messages while having their phone connected nearby. It's available starting today. Microsoft has teamed up with Maybelline to offer new virtual makeup filters. A dozen of them are available for Microsoft's Teams users. They allow makeup to be put on with just one click. It also includes various color options and blurring effects. Well, meanwhile, real estate agents say the local market has finally steadied out since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, but prices you see now across San Antonio may still be higher than they were a few years ago. New numbers from Google say most home buyers want to move to Texas. One realtor here says that's because of the low cost of living and no state income tax. He says the real estate market has steadied out from 2020, but it's still a seller's market with high interest rates and high home prices. He says if you're looking to buy, don't wait. The home appreciation, the prices are going up so rapidly. They're still continuing to grow. Any benefit that you would gain from waiting on your interest, you lose on the increase in the price of the home. So data from Texas real estate source shows certain zip codes in San Antonio, get this, have seen home prices raise more than 200% since 2016. If to see your zip code on that list, just head over to ksat.com. We've just spotted some flashing lights on uh, 281. I can't remember the location, but Steven's got details. Yeah, this just popped up on our end, uh, Mark, and I'm not seeing anything being reported by Texas just yet. I'm going to have to step out of here and talk to our friends at TransGuide, but let's get a closer look and just see what's going on out there because what I'm spotting are flashing lights that appear to be Texas Hero trucks. This looks like a stall via bus uh, off in the shoulder lane. No word yet on which direction this is happening in, but you can see traffic there along 281 is picking up just a bit. Again, I'll step out of here in just a moment uh, to find out what's going on, but keep your eyes out on the road, and if you see those 
those flashing lights, make sure to move over or slow down. Big topic of the morning has been the construction. We have seen a lot of it and just keep this in mind. We have crews in and around the Alamo City and some will be here along I-10 in Kendall County. They have sod placement that's been happening since Monday. This should wrap up on Friday, uh, July 21st, but the work starts pretty early in the morning around 9 should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. So those crews are going to be battling the heat. So give them a break if you can. Single lane closures along the frontage road in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop. But plan that commute ahead of time. Scan this QR code takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening in and around our area. There's a lot taking place, so just know what to expect before you hit the roads. But can we get it back on trans guide here? I didn't want to show uh, what's happening along 281. It does look like we have more first responders that have arrived out there on the scene. I will find out what's going on here in just a moment, but uh, 281 is a busy route, so just watch out. You're right. Definitely looks like a bus out mm -hmm. there. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. All right, I do have to, I don't want to scare the kids. No, school did not start early, oh. so I just want to put the bus in there very quickly They're and like, give Mom? a shout. <laughs> no. Yeah, you still sleep in, but we yeah. were uh, shooting some back to school promos yesterday oh. over at the SAISD bus, uh, bus barn, bus barn yeah. down yeah. there, 10 at Roland, and there were some young ladies that came out and said hi because they were big fans of the show and watching oh, and all nice. that, and they just, they just made my day as much as, as, as energetic as Fantastic. they were so yeah I love that. they Thank said you. and they said they watch us for all the i mean to get weather updates traffic updates Great. and everything like that to, to plan Thank their you. day down there but it was such a pleasure meeting you all yesterday so all right we'll put the bus away in for another <laughs> what month or so out Those there Great still works, out. i love know, that yes, tune just, up. just making sure you know you start it and make sure it's going to fire up in time so <laughs> all right uh take a look at this picture and uh i guess this is is kind of what it feels like you know 10,000 degrees on the surface of the sun wouldn't be so bad after all of these 100-degree uh, days that we've had. About 13 in a row counting today, 25 overall so far, and we are going to continue racking up the uh, the triple-digit days. But great, uh, great shot of the sun there. Thank you very much. We're going to see a little bit of a sunrise this morning, but we do have a few clouds hanging around here. This is a 10 over there by 410. 79 right now, been holding pretty steady with all this humidity and the uh, some of the cloud cover out there. 80s up there around Canyon Lake as well as New Braunfels, New Braunfels, New Braunfels, pardon me. <laughs> Every once in a while, the tongue gets tied up. All right, this is the, the model going into the weekend. And notice how these clouds try and come down here from the north. There, there is the chance, now we start to see these subtle changes in the overall weather pattern, that some of this energy is going to come down here and give us a chance for some rain. This particular computer model is not really too bullish on that one. Another model, yeah, maybe one or two of those Saturday night into Sunday. This one is a little more um, kind of buying into the little sea breeze, some disturbances trying to move on in here, and this would be on Sunday. Again, rain chances are not that great, though. This will also have a few sea breeze showers around here going into Monday. Here's the reason the high, which is basically right on top of us, just off to the west, but it is dominating things. It is showing signs of weakening ever so slightly, which is why temperature is going to be trimmed a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow going into the weekend. And then as we continue on into the weekend, as it moves off closer to the four corners area, there's that little bit of a northwesterly flow. So some of the thinking being that it grabs onto some disturbances, throws them in our direction maybe a shower or two and then same thing on Sunday but then also it's far enough off there that the Gulf can kind of be the the door would be open so it would allow something to move on in here it's not as though we have any big systems coming on in to give us those really great rain chances though so it's just the opportunity would exist or will exist over the weekend um, in other words don't count on it 10% chance of rain Saturday. Uh, I made it 15 on Sunday and then uh, still one or two of those sea breeze showers around there on Monday. But we will continue to chalk up triple digit temperatures through the weekend next week. And uh, right now it's looking like there's no relief in sight through the end of the month at least. So if you want any of your plants to survive, lots of hand watering. Hand watering, yep. Every Day, sometimes yeah. twice a day if they're really sensitive. Yes, indeed. Wouldn't be surprised. Thank you, Mike. 620, 78 degrees. Just ahead, a Florida college student is describing his terrifying experience after getting bit by a shark. The dramatic rescue by his friend is next in your GMA First Look. 
I was stuck. Unresolved depression symptoms were in my way. I needed more for my antidepressant. Raylar helped give it a lift. Adding Raylar to an antidepressant is clinically proven to help relieve overall depression symptoms better than an antidepressant alone. And in Raylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, as these may be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Stomach and sleep issues, dizziness, increased appetite, and fatigue are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. I didn't have to change my treatment. I just gave it a lift. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbbVie can help you save. In this morning's GMA First Look, Shark Bite Survivor. I saw my foot in its mouth and I saw its teeth. And it all happened like in like literally a second. 21-year-old Chris Pospisil was out surfing with his friend Reese Reddish Friday when a shark suddenly yanked him off his board. The moment captured on this Surfline camera. And this morning, he's telling his story to GMA. And it took me underwater and I kicked it once and I let go. And I swam to the top and... I just screamed. I was like, Reese, it bit me. It bit me. It bit me. Help, help, help. Reese jumping into action. The only way I could describe it is pure adrenaline. Uh, my friends hurt, clearly, so I got to help them out no matter what circumstance it is. And he's not alone in his injuries. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll also hear from a survivor bitten off the coast of New York's Fire Island. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Nally, ABC News, New York. It's Shark Week at SeaWorld, and for the first time ever, they are hosting the ultimate shark experience. So for this week only, SeaWorld is selling a new ticket that offers a full day of learning and interacting with sharks. So during the ultimate shark experience, you will get a chance to see sharks up close, touch, and feed them. We use uh, six-foot-long tongs in order to be able to reach the animals in the water at a safe distance. A portion of the money made from the ticket sales will go towards shark conservation. This is important since 100 million sharks are killed every day, every, excuse me, every year because of overfishing. And that's a really big hit to shark populations around the world because sharks are very important to our uh, ocean's ecosystems. Sharks play a vital role in our oceans by keeping fish populations controlled. They do this by feeding on the sick, dying, and injured fish. To learn more about SeaWorld's ultimate shark experience and how you can participate, head to our website, ksat.com. It is 626, 78 degrees. Still ahead of 630, millions of people around the globe live with dementia, but it's not just because of old age. Some bad habits that could be impacting your brain coming up. And there is a winner for the billion dollar Powerball jackpot. Why some people in our area they are also cashing in after last night. Yeah, in a big way. And taking a look at Transguide, and uh, we had a stalled bus here at 281 in San Pedro, but guess what? It's cleared pretty quickly. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. Right now, we want to get into late breaking news on the west side of town. San Antonio police on the scene of what could be a shooting. You're looking live right now. All this happening on Colabra Road near Callahan. And we have a crew there and we are working to get more information for you. As we said, there's a big police presence in this area. We even saw the Eagle helicopter flying over the scene. We're bringing the latest on air and on ksat.com as soon as we know more. Complete shock. Oh my gosh, this is not happening again. Also this morning on GMSA, a pest control company has another truck stolen for the second time in a month and that was before it was used at a crime scene. And you know the heat is happening again too, but do we keep that slight, slight, slight chance of a rain in the weekend forecast? Mike is standing by with some details. Good morning, it's 6.30 on, Thursday, on your Thursday, July 20th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Let's go straight to Mike Ostrage with another look at how hot we got yesterday and how hot we will be today. 
Thank you, by the way, for putting these slight, 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 because that wouldn't fit on the graphics as far as rain chances. But that pretty much uh, sums it up this weekend. More on that in a second. A few clouds around here starting off this morning, like we've had the past uh, couple of days. We are at 79 degrees. Humidity, yeah, you notice it when you step outside when you have a dew point of 73 and that wind primarily out of the uh, southeast at 11 miles per hour. Temperatures have been steady all morning long, mid upper 70s, couple of 80s around here. And yeah, we do have a fair amount of humidity, dew points especially up there around uh, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, Randolph, that's pretty high. I, you'll notice that when you step outside, that's kind of fog up the glasses sort of humidity when you get those dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere up that high. So it feels like 85 up there, Canyon Lake and New Braunfels, and uh, 82 out at the airport. Mold is on the low side. Update account's going to come out in about an hour or so. And throughout the rest of today, 92 at noon. Well, we did hit 104 yesterday. That was the third day in a row of 104. We'll take a degree. There's subtle little changes, or as Mark put it, slight, slight, slight uh, little changes coming up to the uh, the forecast, and that includes those rain chances. Like I said, more on that, but we do also have the heat advisories and the excessive heat warnings in effect up until 8 o'clock, and I think more of these will be issued in some form or another, maybe not as widespread, but in other words, we're still going to stay very hot throughout the uh, foreseeable future. We'll talk more about those small rain chances coming up this weekend. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on, sir? Been a good morning over here, Mike, and good morning to you at home. Let's take a look at what you can expect for that drive time. We have been talking about that closure there at 35 at Brooklyn. If you've driven through that area, you may have seen those barrels out there. Been there for over a month, and the Transguide cameras are still showing the same thing. Keep this in mind, this is following a fire that sparked about a month ago, so we'll have to follow up with TxDOT, find out what the holdup is and when it's going to reopen. Seen some uh, traffic building there at 281 at at Evans, likely in the southbound lanes, the commute is off to a pretty quiet start, but we're getting busier, especially now that we are approaching morning rush. If you're still at home, enjoy that cup of coffee. I'm not spotting major problems. There was a stall bus that we saw look like it could have been a via, via bus along 281 northbound at San Pedro Avenue that has cleared out folks. Uh, that's great news because that's one of those heavily traveled areas as we saw traffic picking up there from the cameras. But giving you a wide look at the map, the big topic of the morning has been a lot of that road work that is taking place in and around our city. Thankfully, none of it has slowed folks down this early in the morning or even overnight. As we take a look at some of these travel times, we are still in the green. If you plan on hitting the roads and heading into the Alamo City this early in the morning, nothing really should slow you down. It should be the normal drive time, but we'll keep a close eye on things. Again, I'm not spotting any major issues being reported at this hour, but I'm tracking things closely right here in the traffic lab. If something pops up, I'll be sure to let you know. Guys. This morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he was shot inside a Southside motel. Happened just after midnight. The 6600 block of South Florida is just north of Southeast Military Drive. Police say the victim was chased by five or six young adults or juveniles into the Capitol Motel. And that's when police say the suspect shot the man in the chest. He died at the scene. The suspects ran away into a nearby neighborhood. So far, no arrests have been made. This morning, a small business is out of tens of thousands of dollars after someone used its company truck to break and rob an ATM. It's the second time in a month that someone stole a truck like the one that you see here from Witten Pest Control. So Patty Witten's company has four technicians and four trucks, and each technician has about 10 appointments a day between cancellations, rescheduling, and damage from both thefts. Witten says her business has lost 15 to 14 to 15 thousand dollars in just the last few weeks. You know, the hardest side of missing that business is those customers, you know, new calls. And so when we tell them it's going to be five, seven, 10 or 15 days before we can get there. And so that is a huge loss for us and new customers. Yeah. San Antonio police are still looking for the suspects in both of these thefts, but they're not sure if the same suspects are involved in both cases. As for Witten, she's now using air tags to help track her trucks. Right now, we want to get back to that late breaking news on the west side of town reports of a shooting. That's right. We find our Katrina Weber. She is live near Calabria and Callahan. Katrina, what do you know? 
Well, very little at this point. We just got here, but we have been able to confirm that this is a deadly shooting. A man who was shot and killed here in the 5600 block. The police have a very wide crime scene, but they seem to be focusing on this apartment complex right here. There's a car in the middle of all this with its door open. Uh, we don't see anything or anyone inside that car, but it seems to be part of the investigation. We also have Eagle flying over right now looking for apparently the shooter in the situation. Situation. We don't know any of the details how it happened, but this call did come out just before 6 o'clock this morning. Police flooded into this area and they have roped things off. Uh, we are waiting for a supervisor to come down and talk to us and give us a little bit more information. But an officer did confirm for me again that uh, it is a man who was shot dead here this morning, apparently somewhere in this apartment complex. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. More on that as we get it. Thank you, Katrina. Well, looking ahead, a Texas judge will decide whether to amend the state's abortion ban for medical emergency. The Center for Reproductive Rights is asking for a, quote, remedy applied to patients whose life or health or fertility is at risk from an emergent medical condition. Three women testified yesterday about the reasons doctors deemed their pregnancies non-viable, but said they could not perform an abortion due to the ban and how they say that decision put their lives at risk. State attorneys argue the plaintiffs are dissatisfied with the medical care they received. New this morning on KSAT.com, nearly 64,000 borrowers here in Texas will have their federal student loans forgiven. Now, this only applies to borrowers with federal loans taken more than two decades ago. The Department of Education says it affects borrowers whose debts should have been canceled but weren't due to past administrative failures. More people will likely have their debts forgiven as part of the review. In case you were wondering, one lucky person in California is holding a ticket matching all six numbers in last night's Powerball drawing. A jackpot worth an estimated $1.08 billion was sold in Los Angeles, California. There's some good news, though, for two area residents. According to the Texas Lottery, two $1 million tickets were sold in our region, one in Pleasanton and the other in San Marcos. If you need to cool off today, you can enjoy some free tea at McAllister's Deli. They are celebrating its 15th annual free tea day by giving away 32 ounce cups of their famous tea for free. They have four locations here in San Antonio. We have information all about these stories right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Glad you're with us this morning. 638, 78 degrees. Just ahead, tens of millions of people are living with dementia across the globe, but it's not only because of old age just ahead some bad habits that could be impacting your brain. Okay, we're back at just about 642 this morning. Over 55 million people worldwide are currently living with dementia, but it's not just from old age. And as you can see behind us, things like smoking, fried food could be causing more forgetfulness. Leslie Hudson breaks down some bad brain habits you need to watch out for. Your keys, your wallet, your phone. What do you misplace the most? My car keys. Uh, yeah, I lost my phone in the couch for like an hour last night, actually. <laughs> it's normal to forget some things, but could some of your bad habits be causing you to become more forgetful? We know a diet high in fats and carbs are bad for our bodies, but new research shows it may be really bad for our brains, too, especially fried foods. They're full of oxidized fats, which can cause inflammation and have been linked to Alzheimer's disease. Not getting enough sunlight can also impact your brain. Data from epidemiological studies suggest a link between low levels of vitamin D and neurodegenerative diseases. And if you want to protect your brain, kick the habit. Smoking increases the risk of vascular problems, including stroke, brain bleeds and dementia. And a new study published by BMJ, scientists identified habits that slow the rate of memory decline. First, stay active by getting at least 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous activity per week. The next healthy factor, a diet that included appropriate daily amounts of at least seven of these 12 food items. I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. 
Well, if you have to be out the door at 645, grab the car keys. You have about one minute to go. Steven, what's, what's looking out there? Well, I found my car keys. They were in my pocket the whole time. So <laughs> I was just mentioning to them I couldn't find him. All right, let's get a look around town. 410 at Babcock. The morning commute has been off to a pretty good start. We had some issues reported earlier, and a lot of it was, uh, this is new, 410 at McCullough. A new shot from Transguide, but that is a stall vehicle. But we've never really seen traffic come at the screen like that. I'll get that shot up in just a moment. But as you can see, the morning commute is moving along just fine. Let's take you to our map where we do have a few stall vehicles to talk about. Out. First one is going to be right here along US 90, not too far from Military Drive, and it's in the eastbound lane. So if your travels are going to take you right into the Alamo City, the downtown area, let's say you're going to see that stall vehicle. So watch out. A little bit further down shows a stall vehicle, this time in the opposite direction, US 90 westbound at Couples Road. But this now seems to be the trending issue, as you just saw that shot at Transguide at 410. That's a stall reported in the eastbound lanes, not too far from McCullough Avenue. So there it is. Uh, traffic is moving along at 410 at McCullough. Our friends at Transguide changed the shot up at us, but it's likely because they're trying to get different vantage points of that particular stretch of roadway there. But as you can see, the camera zooming in, that's a pretty busy spot. Uh, that's really where traffic really starts to pick up in the morning. So a stall bus or via bus uh, was reported earlier. That cleared out, but we'll watch the roads closely. Check those vehicles as well. Do you do that often? Lose your car keys, but they're in your pocket? Yeah, when I was on the night beat, oh my gosh, it happened. Uh, I lost my keys for all two hours, and I was here, and they were... Uh, out in the garden that we have. Oh. I don't know why. No, but every once in a while. Yeah, Sorry. I, I, the, garden, I usually try the, gar the garden gnome stole Try to be yeah. methodical about, <laughs> Sorry. about keeping on things. And I, it wasn't recent, too long ago. And I was like, Wait, where is my phone? I, I was like, oh, yeah, it's in my pocket. You're so. right. well, I saw this the other day. Somebody's like, I cannot find my phone. Mm. Uh, and they're holding it. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, was like, the I was like, where was it? Yeah. <laughs> or glasses are on your head or something. Sunglasses all the time. Happens. You're not alone. Not that that happens to us or with old age. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what old age? What old age? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about getting one of these little pools there. Yeah. And not for the dog. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Remy is definitely staying cool. And make sure uh, with if there's bowls of water outside like that, even sometimes in the shade, they can heat up a lot. And s try and skip the metal stuff if you can, because that really heats up quickly. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture, by the way. There's some of the morning clouds that are hanging around here. We can just barely make out a little bit of the, uh, the downtown skyline right there. Uh, as far as consecutive days of hitting 100. This includes today because we are going to be hitting 100. This is 13 now in a row. Last year, now we did obviously get up to 58 degrees over 58 days, pardon me, over all of triple digit temperatures, but there were only a couple of stretches or at least one stretch got up to 14 days and then back in 2013, 15 days in a row. So I think we uh, have a very good chance of moving up at least into second place and maybe then some just looking at the uh, the forecast and how many triple digit days are in store for us. Mid upper 60, mid upper 70s. Boy, I wish it was wishful thinking there. A couple of 80s out there. Uh, temperatures will stay pretty steady the next few hours. Some of those clouds hanging around here. Then we are going to make it up to 92 at noon. Lots of sunshine, blazing sunshine. At least we get the humidity to drop off 103 for a high temperature. The low clouds really aren't showing up yet on the uh, satellite picture. Up to the north of us, obviously a lot more clouds, a couple of showers up there around Oklahoma and Kansas. And you can see the big clockwise rotation with the high, which is centered off to the west of us. The hope being that that high will start to work its way off to the west a little bit more into the northwest and then get us into this sort of northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, which this computer model is trying to bring in here late Saturday. It's not really too bullish on producing any rain um, as the, the high kind of scooches off to the west a little bit more that will open the door for the Gulf of Mexico. This one tries to get a disturbance coming in here by Sunday from the Gulf, so maybe a chance for some rain then as well. One thing to take away from this, of course, it's kind of a paints in with a broad brush, as I always say. So uh, rain chances, again, don't get your hopes too high, unfortunately. But it is a pretty good bet of, uh, yeah, moving up in the consecutive triple digit list because we're going to be at triple digits all weekend long. And at least the first half of next week, and it's looking like all the way through next week and through the end of the month, and that very small chance for some rain over the weekend. Okay, so weekend, a good chance to go see Oppenheimer yes, and Barbie. Yep. Stay Which inside. Which one are you going to? 
Barbie, of course. <laughs> Ask a silly question. <laughs> Barbie. Silly man. <laughs> right now, 648, 78 degrees. Speaking of It's a Barbie World, she created it. Greta Gurick will be live in Times Square to talk about her much anticipated Barbie movie. That's coming up next on GMA starting at 7. But first, we have to wrap up GMSA, which is coming up after the break as we take a live look outside with live cam on your Thursday morning. The search is on for a shoot on the west side of town. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live in the 5600 block of Culebra Road that's near Callahan, and this whole area is a crime scene right now. Police are focusing on this apartment complex. There's also a car in the middle of all this, and they say that is in the middle of this uh, situation here. That is where they found a young man, possibly a teenager, uh, who was suffering from gunshot wounds in his back and his head. Uh, they say that they also caught a couple of people down the street who they believe ran from this car. Now, those people are witnesses at this point, and they told police that they were being chased or followed by someone in another car who then fired those shots, hitting uh, that teenager who was in the back seat of the car. Uh, police have had their helicopter up. They've also been searching this area thoroughly, uh, looking for whoever did the shooting. So far, they have not caught up with that person. They're still trying to sort this out. They're not sure why why that person might have been following them or why those shots were fired. All of this still under investigation. Now, I have a correction to make. Earlier, I did check with an officer. He said that this was a fatal shooting. However, just talked to the sergeant. He says that's not exactly the case. They thought that that victim had died from his gunshot wounds, but apparently he has been taken to a hospital and is being treated with life-saving measures. They're trying to save his life as we speak. But again, that person shot while in the back of a car police searching for the person who did the shooting. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. The heat seems to be all anyone can talk about these days. That's why today on GMSA at 9, we'll be talking with a health expert about the serious health risks associated with scorching temperatures and high humidity. So tune in for that live Q&A today at GMSA at 9. Happening later today, our KSAC Community Phone Bank to help raise money for Project MEND. It's the oldest and largest licensed nonprofit that accepts and repurposes medical equipment. We will be accepting donations over the phone to buy more wheelchairs, which is the most requested and needed piece of medical equipment. The phone bank will run today from noon to 2 p.m. and then again from 5 until 10.30 p.m. And this is all leading up to the organization's annual city-wide donation drive that's happening this weekend. You can drop off any type of medical equipment at the Wonderland of Americas Saturday from 9 to 1 p.m. For more information, just check out ksaccommunity.com. On the road, Stephen is watching 410 near North Star Mall. Yep, Steven. stall vehicles out there, guys. That has been the trending problem of the morning traffic coming right at your screen there along 410. This is in the eastbound lane, so be on the lookout. Doesn't look like it's causing so much of a delay with traffic, but we'll show you what the map looks like. Uh, notice that traffic's moving about 10 miles per hour, also on 35. If you're heading in, let's say from Live Oak to the Alamo City, we'll find out what's going on there. But that stall vehicle you just saw from Transguide is causing a bit of a backup there up to Blanco Road. So be on the lookout at 410 eastbound as you approach McCullough. You may see a little bit of a delay. Quick jump over here does show another stall vehicle reported along 90 eastbound at Military Drive, not causing so much of an issue. We're going to watch the roads closely, uh, but Mike, other than that, it's uh, been a pretty cool morning in my department. Not so cool in my department, though. Uh, we've got temperatures, lots of clouds out there that are in the uh, mid upper 70s and even a couple of low 80s. And then throughout the day, 92. Won't hit 104 again, so that's a little bit of good news. 103 high temperature today, and at least the humidity will drop down uh, somewhat in the afternoon, so a bit more tolerable, if you will. We still have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings for uh, specific counties through tonight, and triple digits remain in the forecast all the way through the weekend into next week. Small rain chances. We get a subtle little shift in the pattern, so hopefully a shower here or there, but just thing is, don't get too excited about mm. rain chances. Don't and don't forget out. that sidewalk gets up to about 150, 160 degrees. So walk your dogs early or late. Thank you, guys. Hey, GMA is next. We'll see you at 9.